Hello everybody, Mary here, and we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between science and technology. Science and technology, people have a tendency to say them in one sentence, science and technology, but they're not the same. And they have very different definitions, and we need both. We're sitting here at a technical college, and so what is science and what's technology? We're going to spend some time talking about this. First off, science. Science has been my life's work, and I totally love science. The definition of science is to know. Scientists are the nosiest human beings on the planet. We want to know everything. We want to know why is the sky blue? Why are sunflowers yellow? Why do beagles have very soft ears? Why are most things that are alive symmetrical so they have two eyes and two paws and two ears and two feet? Why do some chemical reactions happen and some chemical reactions not happen? Why is the earth round? Why are there land masses and water? And why is there more water on the surface than land? When you have a Newton's cradle, when one ball gets hit in, why does only one come out? These are all just some of the questions we want to know about for science. And in science, we just want to know why, the big why for science, just for the giggles of it. There's no purpose. There's no grand scheme of what we're going to do with the information. We are a nosy species and we want to know. One of the most recent examples of a great discovery in science was the discovery of gravitational waves back in 2015. A Nobel Prize was given in physics for this discovery, um, and I believe that Nobel Prize was awarded in 2017. This was a huge deal. What causes a gravitational wave? Well, it's the collision of black holes or neutron stars. And when you get a couple of the most gravitationally huge objects in the universe, and they spiral into each other, they cause space itself, the fabric of space, to actually whipple, ripple, and wiggle, and those ripples of space get traveled through millions of light years of space and time, and they come to Earth. There are two huge telescopes that have been invented and, and built to detect these gravitational waves. One is in the state of Louisiana, one is in the state of Washington, and back in 2015, almost immediately after those telescopes went online, they detected gravity waves. Now, why is this a big deal? This is a whole new way to see in the universe. We have never been able to see gravity travel before. So what is going to come out of this that is going to have anything to do with your life? Um, sometimes people ask me, does this have anything to do with the price of my gasoline? No. Does this have anything to do with the price of a gallon of milk when you go to the store? No, it's not. We are discovering this because we are a curious species and we want to know how the universe is put together. We want to know the answers to questions. So science is about knowing stuff. Now, what is technology? Technology is about taking that information that we discover in science and making something useful for mankind. And technology is science that has been applied to life and humans and animals and what we're doing. Now, why do I have this kind of ucky picture of somebody's knee surgery? Well, let's talk about lasers. The laser was invented by Theo Maiman and Bell Labs back in 1960. And when the laser was invented, it was called a solution in search of a problem. People knew that a laser was a very, very cool thing, but they didn't knew, know all of the wonderful things you could do with a laser. Well, when I was in high school long ago and far away, one of my dear high school friends was a runner. And she, like a lot of runners, blew her knee out. And when she blew her knee out, we're talking in the late 1970s here, yep, I'm an old lady, in the late 1970s, when she blew her knee out, she had to have this kind of surgery. They cut this huge seam down her entire knee. They had to poke around inside. They had to fix things. She was on crutches for many, 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 many months. And she then had to be not running for something like six months. She was like six months 
off of her sport. It was a very long and huge recovery time. Well, that was about 20 years after the invention of the laser that was the surgery. Well, by the 1980s, so we're talking maybe about 25 years after the invention of the laser, there was a thing that was invented called arthroscopic surgery. Nowadays, if somebody has the same knee injury, what happens is they go to the doctor. The doctor makes three small, tiny incisions in the knee. They put in some instruments. They put in a light source. They put in some little instruments so they can do some little microscopic cutting and suturing and things like that. And if you've had friends that have had this kind of surgery, it's usually an outpatient event. Um, when they're done, they usually have to go home and put their little knee up on a little pillow and they take a little Tylenol for a couple days or a couple weeks. And within about two weeks, they're good to go. This is a tremendous example of technology as compared to science. The invention of the laser was science. It was invented just because Theo Maiman and Bell Labs, they wanted to see if they could. Can they invent a laser? And they did. But within 25 years, this was making knee surgery simple and easy and recovering time just much shorter. That is the relationship between science and technology. Science always comes first. Technology always follows. And how long does technology follow? Years, always years, and sometimes decades later. So when a new scientific discovery comes about, sometimes people look at me and say, well, why are we spending our tax money on things like that? Well, because we're going to get cool stuff out of it, but we don't know what it's going to be, and we don't know when it's going to be. This is another example. Back in 1973, the U.S. Department of Defense came up with GPS. Well, in 1995, so a little over 20 years later, the first in-dash GPS went in the Olds, in Oldsmobile models, the upper end Oldsmobile models, and it was called GuideStar. And now, I don't know about you, I can't hardly find my grocery store or my way home without my GPS. Um, we are totally addicted to the things. But that is another great example of science versus technology. As George Lucas has been known to say, he's been known to say that all art is limited by technology. So what we can do is limited by the technology we have invented and we have to have science in order to do that technology. My question to you is what are new technologies that have existed in today's world in your industry that weren't there 20 years ago? I bet you can list a half a dozen of them because every industry, every area of technology, every modern age, things are changing constantly. And isn't it a wonderful thing? All right. We will come back and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>